Yo, been here. Fun fact, in 1925, about half the houses in the U.S. had electricity. But in less than 50 years, we would land on the moon. Fast forward 50 years, and it's 2019. But our houses, they haven't changed at all. Seriously, the last major innovation for your house was the electric sewing machine in 1963. Unless you want to count the Roomba, or the Instant Pot. Fortunately, home automation is here, and it's gonna put us back on the timeline. Today, I'm gonna to show you what I think is the best and the easiest way to get started. Let's get to it. <clears throat> Let's get to it. No! <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's get to it. No! Ball! Oh. Right, oh, that's, here's your sign. That's why. Let's get to it. Yeah. Broadcast for home assistant. Beginning video sequence. 60% of the time works every time. Okay, so before we get too far, I wanna tell you why I think you should care about home automation. You can click the timestamp in the video description if you want to jump to like the how-to part. But if you're into smart home, you should listen to what I'm about to say. Let's be real for a second. I think in 2019, just about everybody knows that when you buy something these days, it typically comes with some kind of smart option that lets you control that device in some kind of new or different way. You can control lights from an app or you can group them together. You can toggle an outlet from a voice assistant. Turn on the kitchen kettle. You got it, turning the kettle on. Or you can control a TV from a Chromecast. These days, just about everything has a remote or an app or can be connected in one way or another. But in my opinion, in 2019, that's not exactly new. I mean, sure it's better now and it's cheaper and it generally works, but at face value, the majority of smart tech just means it's remote controlled. I don't know about you, but to me, that doesn't really qualify as smart and it's definitely not automated. So it really grinds my gears when the mainstream media is prattling on about some new smart home tech, but in reality, it's just some overpriced remote controlled junk. What they should be talking about are smart home hubs which is a single device that can control all of those other remote control devices and put it into one interface. That way the hub can control any device based off the status of any other device or sensor or any data point. That's how I can have my Z-Wave light switch adjust the volume on my TV. I mean, they are totally separate ecosystems and not related at all, but because they all connect to that smart home hub, I can do anything from anything. That's what makes me realize I'm living in 2019. And that leads us to Home Assistant, which I think is one of the best and the easiest smart home hubs out there. It can integrate like 1,200 different components, which is completely unrivaled. You never have to buy something and ask, oh, is it gonna be compatible with my smart home? The answer is with Home Assistant, almost certainly it is, unless it's, hot garbage like Android TV, which gives you zero ways to control it, Google. Anyway, wanna know how to get started with Home Assistant? Let's get to it. <clears throat> okay, so Home Assistant can be installed on a lot of different devices and it can be installed in a lot of different ways. But for just about everybody who's getting started, I would recommend buying a dedicated Raspberry Pi for like $35 and running Home Assistant on that. If you've been around this channel before, then you'll know that the Home Assistant installation has changed a lot. Uh, quick recap, it used to be a Python installation and then it was all in one installer script and then it was Haspian, which was a custom version of Raspbian. Those were okay, but you still had to install a lot of the supporting dependencies with the command line, uh, which was kind of gross. But then they released Hasio, and Hasio was a big deal because it added the addition of new modular add-ons based on Docker, which really simplified the addition of additional software that runs alongside of Home Assistant. That version of Hasio ran on Resin OS. Home Assistant still couldn't control a lot of the system level stuff. And so all of that, sets us up for where we are today, which is the ultimate form of HASIO called HASIO. 
they didn't give it a new name. But what's different is Hasio now runs on a custom operating system called HasOS, which is written from the ground up to give Home Assistant complete control of your device, all the IO pins, uh, ports, everything. And I know you're like, oh my gosh, Ben, stop talking, nobody cares. But you will care about this because Home Assistant is so user-friendly now. It is a different game from where it was two years ago. It's kind of unbelievable. Get pumped. All right, let's install it. Holy moly. Uh, so to install Home Assistant, get yourself a Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, which is not this one. Uh, Raspberry Pi, power supply. Uh, that's all right. And most important, and most importantly, a nice SD card. I like these Samsung Evo SD cards. Um, really any U3 SD card will work. The faster that SD card is, the faster Home Assistant will run. To install Home Assistant, go to the Hasseo website and then click the disk image for the Raspberry Pi you're using. These can run a 64-bit operating system. A lot of developers don't support that right now. Uh, there's not really a huge performance gain for systems this lightweight. So I would recommend the 32-bit version of the operating system. Also download the Etcher app. It's an application you will use to write to that SD card, install that, get that fired up. You won't believe the next step. Take your SD card and plug that into your computer. Open Etcher, then select the disk image you just downloaded. Make sure that it's pointed to your SD card. Probably is, Etcher's good like that. And then hit flash. Okay, so after Etcher finishes and you uh, change the batteries in your voice recorder, uh, you can unplug the SD card, put it into your Pi and rock and roll. However, if you wanna connect your Raspberry Pi to Wi-Fi, a very simple way to do that, unplug your Pi, plug it back in. You have to do that because Etcher will, by default, uh, eject SD cards after it writes to them. Then go to your SD card, and inside of that boot folder, create a new folder called config. And inside of that, create a new folder called network. Then inside of the network folder, create a new text file and call it my-network. Then go back to the Hasio website at this link. I'll also put it in the video description, but copy all of this information and paste it into that text file. Make sure you change your SSID and your password to whatever you're using for your network. Hit save. And the last thing we need to do is get rid of that file extension. If you don't have it enabled, go to view and then click this checkbox. Uh, it says file name extensions, click that. Uh, and then you can click the file, erase that .txt. That's it. Now take your SD card out of your computer, plug it in. You won't believe this part. Connect your Raspberry Pi to power. Bah, chicka bow. Oh, my overhead camera. Oh man, I'm sorry guys. That's, this is, oh man, you could have been having these views. Mm, God, I'm glad I set this camera up. Did I break that port? Holy mother of pearl. Bah! Done. After you plug your Raspberry Pi in, you're gonna wanna wait like five or 10 minutes. It's gotta connect to the network and then download the uh, latest version of Home Assistant and do a bunch of stuff. So be patient. After that, if your router is your friend and it supports MDNS, you should be able to access Home Assistant on this Raspberry Pi by going to any other device on the same network. You can open a web browser and type in hasseo.local colon 8123. And there it is. If for whatever reason your router doesn't support MDNS, this does go wrong sometimes, uh, you'll have to type the IP address of your Raspberry Pi directly. If you don't know how to find your Raspberry Pi's IP address, I like to use an app called Fing, uh, F-I-N-G. Uh, make sure your phone is connected to the same network. You can open Fing, hit scan, it'll search your network for all of your different network devices. And if you search through the list, you should see your Raspberry Pi listed there uh, somewhere. Oh, yep. So you can just type in that IP address, uh, colon 8123. That colon 8123 is the port that Home Assistant runs on. 
and you have to include it. So make sure it's there. Once the installation finishes, you can create your login credentials. You are off and running. In the next video, I'm going to talk about Home Assistant 101, um, which is probably the video you were looking for when you clicked this one. But uh, you watch this one anyway. Um, I'll link that video wherever YouTube links things these days. And uh, with that, happy automating. Oh man, I changed my camera outlets. Pretend like this happened too. Monitor damn it.